Hi again, I'm Pierre. Welcome to the garage. Uh, this episode will talk about something that uh, creates lots of controversy is uh, the caliper. Uh, it's called caliper, calipers, vernier, uh, approximator and uh, just about everyone working in the uh, metal industry like machinists, uh, metal workers, uh, just uh, anyone that has to take precise measures will use. Um, and uh, there's a controversy about, oh, yeah, I'm paying too much, or I'm buying the cheap one, and let's say uh, I'm going to get as much for my money as, uh, as possible. And uh, it's as precise and as good, or, you know, and uh, that's what we're going to be trying to test this week. We are uh, working on the not so expensive one, $12, and I even got two of them, so just to make sure, a, a new one and, a, and an old one. And also, we're going to be trying to compare with what people consider a much better one. And is there any difference? Anything uh, to compare? Uh, let's go and check it out. And uh, let's just see on what side we're on. Let's go proceed. Okay, just before we uh, really start uh, the, the actual testing, uh, let's say that I'm using some uh, references. These are the gauge blocks. The gauge blocks are about at least 10 times as precise as the uh, the instruments are, if not more. Uh, I'll be testing two uh, Mastercraft uh, calipers. One has been purchased uh, about a year and a year and a year and a half ago, maybe something like that. Maybe the other one's uh, been bought like six to seven six, seven, ten years ago. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, it's worn a little bit. I'm using it regularly for uh, maybe approximations. It's not, you know, uh, an instrument that I will send the measures to someone else to compare with. As for the three next ones, uh, which are more like, uh, to me, a little bit more reference because they're a Mitutoyo uh, brand name. Uh, the first one is uh, just almost brand new, no much wear on it. Uh, purchased uh, recently. Uh, the other one is medium wear, a few years down. Uh, and the third one, uh, Mititoyo with uh, measuring surfaces made of the carbide. Uh, this is the first, I think this is the first one I had uh, in the uh, digital calipers. And uh, pretty reliable, one of my uh, workhorse when I need more uh, precise referencing and uh, as using uh, a vernier, scale, a vernier or a caliper. So uh, let's uh, let's go and uh, now we'll uh, just see, you know, put them to test and uh, see what the conclusions will be. Okay, let's get to work now. You apply a little bit of pressure where you need to apply the pressure. Calibrate your uh, caliper to zero. Let's try with the one inch uh, reference. Same pressure there again. We're reading one inch, not too bad. Okay, let's try with a two inch gauge block. Make sure everything slides in good. Holds good, same pressure again, two inches. That's not bad again. Now we're going to three inches. Make sure everything's clean. Gauge block again. And we're measuring three inches, same pressure, important. And let's go for a four inch now. Oops, this is a little bit more tricky to hold. Okay, here we go. Wiggle it to, uh, okay, now I've got my pressure on. Wiggled enough, four inch. That's nice because that's linear. That's, uh, you know, reliable measures. Uh, let's try another one. This is another one. This is even a newer model, and we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be turning it on, make a zero, and from there, go for clean jaws. And we got one inch. Always make sure that uh, your pressure is on it. Uh, 
There we go. Sometimes uh, little things get in there. Okay, this is one inch. Let's go for a two inch gauge block. Again, making sure we apply the right amount of pressure. Let's go for a three inch gauge block. Okay, wiggle it till it sits in the properly in the jaws. Same pressure as usual, three inches. And let's go for four inches now. Make sure everything's clean again. Wiggle it again. Okay, we're getting 4.05. Oops, 0, 0.50. Zero. So it means that uh, we're pretty close from 4, or maybe a little bit above, and it's going to switch between the, the 0 and the 5. But that's, that's pretty constant. Okay, let's go for... Uh, this is a pretty much older model. But an expensive one since these uh, jaws are made a carbide I think you can yeah you can see the difference in the uh, in the U or the color see this these ones the inside ones are made of carbide too so clean up let's turn it on resets to zero let's try the one inch this is one inch Ah, uh, yeah, let's go for two inches now. A little bit of wiggling. Two inches. Three inches. Make sure everything wiggles nice and clean. That's three inches. There we go. And four now. Let me, okay, just, okay, that's stable. It, okay, that's going to oscillate between four and point five. Uh, okay, that's good measures pretty reliable. I got to be careful not to press there. It's got a hold button there. Okay, this one good. Let's try the uh, $12 ones now. <laughs> I like them. Okay, let's clean. Uh, turn it on. Put the pressure on it a little bit. Zero it. Uh, go for an inch. A bit of wiggling. Yeah, it's going on from a uh, one inch to nine nine ninety nine point five. So it's close enough. Now let's try two inches. Okay, we're getting a definite one under. Let's say a little bit less than one under to one under. This is two inches. Now let's try three inches. Uh, oscillating between, you know, 99 and 98.5, which is a little bit more than uh, one under between one and one point five under this is the uh, four inch so all right, it's a little heavier to make it hold on uh, this measures like two under one point five to two under and I'm always applying the same pressure so these calipers are not exactly, I would say, as linear. And uh, just to 
make the test more uh, conclusive with something like uh, let's make the uh, the other one this is this is a more recent model this is a model about uh, I don't know a uh, year year ago or something uh, the other one this one here is about oh, at least 10 years old if not more but let's apply pressure reset the zero on this and let's go for an inch okay one that's a little bit over one and we're just going to reset again just to give it a give it a chance like a bad kid sometimes given a second chance of behaving uh, we're still getting like a little bit above okay this is the one the one inch two inches now okay this is two inches that's uh, oscillating between two and half a thousand above oops okay between two and two and half thousand above that's good and let's try the uh, three inch now this is definitively one thousand above and let's try the four inch now this is another yeah this is definitively a, a thousand above so I think this to my conclusion you know these cheaper ones are good but not great one thing to watch whenever you buy a caliper cheaper good but uh, mostly the cheaper ones is the uh, watch the uh, jaws there and uh, make sure that when they're closed and uh, check the with the angle you don't see any light going through these uh, these jaws there and make sure this one here also the uh, for the inside measurements the uh, gap is pretty even and then when it's very straight you should see a very 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 fine line uh, of light and regular length so it make sure make sure that these are two things that you have to consider it's more obvious on the bigger uh, the bigger ones let's say you buy a uh, 30 inches or uh, 25 inches or uh, something like that the cheaper ones will have a tremendous gap and there really be uh, the manufacturing is really poor on those so uh, look out for that hey time to conclude this now um, as far as I'm concerned uh, for roughing you're working in a harsh environment you're working uh, where tool hmm, tends to vanish uh, you're working with broad tolerances uh, as this as we've seen the tolerances are plus minus one and a half thousand like uh, I wouldn't trust it for closer than that uh, but good tool you know twelve dollars I paid about seven eight years ago it's been reliable I've been using this almost every day and this is great I, I even got a second one just in case the first one just uh, lets me down uh, you need uh, to work on closer tolerances and uh, you need to have something a little bit more let's say reliable and where the scale is more linear uh, I suggest I highly suggest that you get something like a Mitutoyo or a Starrett or any brand name there in my uh, in my opinion they're more reliable I own a few of those and I don't regret it when I when I work on something more precise uh, I finish the job with this and uh, if you need to exchange uh, data or measurements between you and other guy, other other fellow uh, co-workers and things like that, uh, a caliper is not exactly uh, the tool to go. If you need some references to be exchanged, you uh, work with the uh, micrometers that are calibrated and things like that. Then the uh, let's say this is 
let's say plus minus one around there you know or really or even a little better uh, you can rely on this but this is uh, easily bit, you know under uh, half a thousand uh, and it's pretty much uh, repeatable too so uh, I would go for even the um, the digital or uh, the uh, the ordinary type they're very reliable tools they're very repeatable and this is you know for exchange the data exchange and measure exchange this is going first though hey if you like this video hey don't forget to uh, thumbs up uh, comments and also subscribe uh, just so you know it's motivation for producing more and better videos so uh, be my guest and uh, we'll see you uh, we'll see you soon